Welcome back. Weeks 21 and 22, we are turning into geologists slash gemologists, and we are going to be doing some tests on minerals to try to identify their different properties. We know from Psalms 24, 1, the earth is the Lord's and all the fullness thereof. So what do you know about minerals? We know everything in the earth from that verse. And the verse in Romans talks about all things point to the Lord or from him, for him, through him. So what do we know about minerals? How do minerals give God glory? Well, minerals are chemicals we find in the ground or in soil. And did you know minerals... Um, are used in our bodies. Minerals are used to keep our bodies healthy and strong. Minerals can, other minerals can also be used to make building materials, other like steel and the iron. Um, other chemical or other minerals are used to make cosmetics. So minerals are used all around us for all kinds of different purposes and they um, are important for scientists to be able to identify and know their properties so they know how they can be utilized as um, useful tools. So even minerals, chemicals that are found in the dirt and ground um, have life-changing properties and also are used in food um, and absorbed into food for our own nutrition and health. So down to the little chemicals in the soil, the Lord had purpose for that, um, even in just helping us stay strong. So today, we're gonna be doing various things. Um, so mineral kits look differently. For our, we have been blessed to have been handed down these beautiful little kits that are labeled. And so we're gonna be utilizing the minerals I've been given and doing our test on those. We are not going to be trying to identify the minerals. We're just going to practice all the different tests because that by itself will take plenty of time. Week 21, we're doing the first six minerals. Week 22, we're doing the second six minerals. Each child will be given this handout. Okay, for the littles, um, tutors, you may just keep one and then just fill it out together. Um, but you'll have plenty of minerals for each of the kids to at least work in pairs to do the test on. So we're gonna go through a couple of them so you can see the different tests that we're gonna do here. So the first one I have here is fluorite. Test number one is color. Well, what color, I'll try to show you here, is fluorite. Fluorite is clear white, okay? So clear or white, either works. Next test is streak. The streak test is where we get back to our porcelain tile and you're going to streak it just like we did the metal spoons. When we did the streak test with that, left a gray line behind it, which showed us the color of the steel uh, or the iron in the steel. So the streak test for our fluorite, we do it on here. Oh, and fluorite's kind of breakage, kind of easy. Um, and it leaves pretty clear, doesn't do much of a streak. So I would call it clear, clear or white. Um, for our streak test. Next test is transparency. Again, I'm just following our identification guide here that you also will be doing, just kind of using that as what it is. Transparency is how light um, goes through a mineral. So if you use this, oh, that kind of is not good videoing, but light, <laughs> so your options are opaque, where it does not go through, translucent, where the light kinda goes through, um, or transparent, where the light pretty much goes all the way through. And for fluorite, the light pretty much goes all the way through. I would call it transparent as our transparency test. Our next test is luster. Now the difference here, luster is what happens when light reflects on the mineral. So if I hold it, your options there are words like glassy, metallic, um, dull, or pearly. And so the light reflecting here on the fluorite is a little bit dull, really. There's a couple kind of pearly maybe, but it's a um, little bit shiny, but not super, um, not super metallic or anything. In certain lights, it's a little glassy. So um, 
whatever you think there um, is, again, the luster is how it reflects light. One side of this particular um, portion is dull and the other side is actually pretty glassy. So um, you'll kind of get a consensus on the different, um, different little pieces of fluorite that your class has. But that is luster, how it reflects the light. Next, we do a hardness test. Frederick Mose was a scientist who created the Mose hardness scale. The purpose of this, he, he took different minerals, tested them against each other, and made a, a list from one to 10 of how hard a mineral was. One being the softest, 10 being the hardest. So to do a hardness test, um, they actually utilize this test for um, you know, testing concrete, testing different flooring materials. So it's actually used in real life quite a bit. Um, but for our purposes here too, to do the hardness test, we're gonna use some tools, including our fingernails, copper penny, a nail or a steel screwdriver, and glass. So, and I just happen to get these glass tiles, 25 cents on clearance at Lowe's, so you can also use little street plates um, or find glass tiles. So to do a hardness test, I have for my tutors, so this is not stuff you have to remember, um, the second sheet, which number one has the Mohs scale and also has the tools and their hardness, okay? So what you'll do, so the hardness of a fingernail, first of all, the hardness definition of a mineral is um, the resistance of a mineral to be scratched. So it's kind of like the mineral versus your tool. If the tool wins, if the tool is able to scratch the mineral, then the tool is harder. If the mineral wins and it cannot be scratched by that tool, then it is harder. That's kind of the way I think about it. For example, our first tool is our fingernail. It has the hardness of about 2.5 on the Mohs scale. So I take it to my fluorite here and I try to make a scratch. And there is no scratch left behind. So then I go to a penny, a copper penny. And a penny has the hardness of about 3.5. Okay, so somewhere between three and four. So I try to scratch my fluorite. I hold it down there. Ah! and try to scratch it Ooh, I get some chills. Um, with my penny and it does not leave a scratch. And you can dust it off because sometimes it'll leave a little dust but not actually leave an imprinted scratch which is what we're looking for. So did not, so my, it is harder than my nail which is 2.5, it is harder than the penny which is 3.5. So I go to my next test the steel nail or screwdriver in my case, which is somewhere between five and six. And I see if I can scratch which one will win. Ooh, my goodness, gives me chills making scratches on it. Okay. And it is going to be difficult to show you that. I don't think you can see it, but that did leave a scratch. So this tells me that now this one so the steel, which is a five or six, is harder than the mineral fluorite. However, fluorite is harder than the penny, which was about three and a half. So fluorite is somewhere between three and a half and five or six. And that actually is true. Fluorite equals a four on the Mohs hardness scale. So let's, I'll show you another one in a minute, but that kind of makes sense. So you're, kind of doing the tool versus the mineral. And whichever one is, if the tool is harder, then it will, will leave a mark. If the mineral is harder, then it will not. It will resist that scratch. And so that is the hardness test. And that is how you get minerals on a scale. Okay, so we know fluorite if you didn't have the scale in front of you, just from those tools, you could say it was somewhere between three and a half and five, or five and a half, um, based on those tools, and you'd be right. That is the hardness scale. 
So that one's a little bit trickier, a little more involved, but it's actually pretty cool when you do it with each one. The breakage test is just when you break it, which I don't want us to break these all into pieces, but looking at it and just by handling some of these, like the graphite, super crumbly, you can just say, what do you think? If we were to smash this with a hammer, would it smash kind of in lines and pieces or would it crumble? Those are your two options, lines and pieces or crumble. And that's what you would do. But again, we are not going to destroy all of our little minerals. The last test is magnetism. Pick up any old magnet and see if it sticks. And it does not. Um, however, we do have one in here, the magnetite, which does stick. So that's pretty fun. And so it would be the yes on that category, but the others are all no's. Um, okay, I'm gonna do one more quickly through so you can kind of see this again. So we're gonna do um, quartz, so you can see the whole thing. So quartz, color test, white. Streak test. Ooh, godly, definitely white. Again, hard to see in the video, but definitely white. Transparency, how light goes through the mineral. This would be translucent to transparent, I think you could argue. Definitely not opaque because it definitely goes through it. Some that would be opaque would be like this. There's no light that's going through my feldspar here. That is opaque, but gypsum again is kind of clear. I would call it translucent. It's not nearly quite as transparent as the first one we did fluorite. Luster test, how the light reflects on it definitely reflects kind of a glassy look. Glassy, pearly look would be our luster. Hardness test. Again, hardness is the resistance of a mineral to be scratched. So I'm going to use tool number one, my nail, which has a hardness of two and a half. Can I leave a mark? Ah, no. So it is harder, it wins harder than my nail. So I go to the next hard thing, the copper penny. I try to leave a mark and nope, no such luck. So copper penny loses, the um, quartz wins. Go to my next one, which is my steel. I do a test and very coolly, the quartz still wins. The steel could not put a scratch in the quartz. So that tells us right there, the quartz is stronger than a five and a half, five to six, like my steel. So our last and final test for hardness is glass. So what you're gonna do is, ooh, all this scratching gets worse. You're gonna take your, your mineral and you're going to push it into the glass and see if you can cut it <laughs> see if you can cut it and there you can see the quartz can cut the glass so it is stronger so the glass is about a five and a half slightly stronger than the steel nail and so the quartz is above that um, which is true. Quartz is a seven on the Mohs hardness scale. And so those are the four tests we use, our nail, copper penny, steel nail, and then the glass, if you get to that. Um, and quartz is one of the few that we will be testing that actually can leave a true scratch in the glass, which is pretty cool. So quartz wins that battle and has a hardness of, we would know if we didn't have the most scale in front of us, still it was greater than six, six or greater because it cut glass. Okay, breakage, if I were to smash this, do you think it would crumble? Nah, it would go into little lines and pieces. Um, it's pretty solid. Is it magnetic? Nope, so it's a no. And so you would fill those categories out. Those are some examples. Um, have fun being a gemologist and doing some mineral tests. See ya.